Hi, my name's Keith. In this video, I'll be talking about cleaning potentiometers. They come in two styles, the standard uh, rotating style, usually with a knob, and also a linear style, like a fader. In my previous video on restoring an ARP Odyssey, I talked about the different methods of cleaning uh, pots, usually with uh, contact cleaner or compressed air or opening them up and cleaning them directly. If you own a vintage synth, you're probably aware of the maintenance issue. If any dirt or grime gets built up in the potentiometers, you can get scratchy volume controls, bad EQ, unstable oscillators, and just a general flakiness. As well, the front panel won't really be very nice because the uh, faders of the knobs won't move very well. In this video, I'll be taking a more detailed approach and trying some specific ways to clean potentiometers to see which one actually performs the best. I have a board from an ARP Omni, and I thought this would make a great board to test with because it has a series of uh, faders that are all the same, uh, and they're all really grunged up. Uh, this probably hasn't been cleaned in 35 or more years. They're really nasty. They barely move. so. I'll be uh, trying a different method of cleaning each one of these and then we'll look at the result. I'll give you a close-up of the board. I'll leave the first fader as is for comparison. And I'll clean the second fader with compressed air only, the third one with contact cleaner only, the fourth one with contact cleaner and air. For the fifth one, I'll open it up and manually clean the inside with isopropyl alcohol. For the sixth one, I'll keep it closed, but I'll soak it in isopropyl alcohol. And for the last one, we'll compare it to a new fader. This is actually an aftermarket fader from, from Synth Restore in the UK, but it's about as close as we can get to a new fader. After that's done, I'll sweep the response of each of the faders on the storage oscilloscope and compare the results. But first, I have some cleaning to do. I'm in the basement with the cleaning supplies and a low pressure air hose. If you don't have an air hose, you can just use compressed air in a can. It works just as effectively. I'll do all the wet cleaning first and then I'll blow out with the air line because that'll also act as a drying step. It's easier to do most of the cleaning with the faders still attached to the board, but at some point I'll have to desolder them. By now I've done all of the spray cleaning and blowing out with the airline, and I've also desoldered all the faders from the board and numbered them so I don't get them out of order. But there's still two faders that need some work. Number six is supposed to soak in isopropyl alcohol, so I'll just let that sit here for about uh, five minutes. And number five is supposed to be manually opened and cleaned. There's a bit of an art to opening ARP faders. On either side of the body, there's a C-shaped metal clip with two fingers that go around a plastic tab. Because of the age of the faders, the plastic is usually quite brittle. So the uh, best approach is with a pair of pliers to make one quick, sharp movement to try to remove the clip without breaking the plastic. Let's see how successful I am here. There's one. And there's two. The fader breaks apart into three sections. One half of the body has a conductive uh, resistive strip with two terminals. The other half of the body has a conductive strip with a single terminal and uh, that's what comprises the center terminal of the potentiometer. And there's a sliding unit 
uh, slider with uh, two spring terminals and it fits between the two parts of the body to, uh, to complete the potentiometer. The best way to clean these is actually uh, just with isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs. I like to use these cotton swabs specifically made for audiovisual work because they don't fray, but the regular household ones work just as well. It's finally time to make some traces on the oscilloscope. Here's my test jig. I have a 12 volt bench top supply across the fader and the scope probe on the center terminal. And I'll wipe the fader and then we'll see the results on the screen. This is the original replacement fader from Synth Restore. I'm starting with this one just to test out uh, the, the setup and also to see what type of uh, response we should get. So I'll arm the scope and let's see what we get. Okay, that, that's great. That's almost exactly what I would expect to see from a brand new fader. Um, what I'm looking for is a smooth shape with no uh, spiky uh, discontinuities. Um, that indicates that the wiper is in contact with the resistive strip over the whole travel of the fader. I'm not particularly interested in the shape of the curve some of these faders are linear and some have an audio taper. What I'm really looking for are spikes and discontinuities. So this is, uh, this is great. This is what a brand new fader should look like. This is fader number one. It was the one that didn't have any cleaning whatsoever. So let's see what we get. Ugh, okay, that's, that's a mess. You can see the, uh, the spiky pattern where uh, the, the wiper was losing contact with the resistive strip. Um, from a buildup of uh, dirt and grime. So this would be unacceptable in any piece of equipment. This is fader number two. It was the one that was blown out with compressed air, but other than that, there was no other cleaning. Yikes. Okay, it was okay at the beginning, but you can still see there's a buildup of grime in the middle where it completely loses contact. The wiper loses contact with the resistive strip. So yeah, a little better, but still not good enough. This is fader number three. It's the one that was cleaned with contact cleaner, but wasn't blown out with air. So let's see what we get. Yikes. So I, I could feel some mechanical resistance. Um, so there's still a lot of dirt and grime in here and you can see where it flattens out. And also at the end, we totally uh, lose contact. So what I'm assuming happened was that the contact cleaner did clean some of the track but it basically just pushed all the dirt at the end of the uh, the travel and that's why we lose contact right here at the end so better still but still not good enough this is fader number four it was the one that was cleaned with contact cleaner and then blown out with the airline so we'll see what we get that's pretty good. There's a few little areas where there's a few spikes, but other than that, this is pretty acceptable. This is fader number five. It was the one that was opened up, manually cleaned, and then reassembled. So we'll check this one out. Wow, that's really smooth. This is pretty much indistinguishable from a brand new fader. And finally, fader number six. This is the one that was soaked in isopropyl alcohol but was not blown out with the airline. You know, that's almost as good as the original one as well. There's just a, a tiny little bit of a discontinuity here, but it's pretty good. Before I give a summary, I should mention that I've been using the terms fader, pot, and potentiometer kind of interchangeably in this video. And generally, they all describe the same type of device. But usually when somebody says fader, they mean a linear potentiometer. And when they say pot, they mean a rotary style potentiometer. Also, it might not be obvious, but it's much easier to access the inside of a fader for cleaning with either a contact cleaner or compressed air because there's a slot right across the top here. 
With a pot, on the other hand, there's usually only limited access, but sometimes near the terminals you can uh, squeeze in the nozzle for uh, compressed air or, or uh, contact cleaner. I'll give you a close-up. So here's the shaft, and where the terminals enter the body of the pot, there's a thin opening, and that's where you can spray in contact cleaner. Now, to sum up, it's pretty obvious that Compressed air alone isn't very good at deep cleaning, but it's probably not a bad idea for routine preventative maintenance. It's surprising that contact cleaner alone doesn't do a good job either. I find that surprising because the standard way to clean potentiometers, you know, is you just spray some contact cleaner in, exercise the part, and then you're done. But what I really think is happening is the dirt is getting dissolved, but then it just gets pushed to the side and there's no way for it to escape. On the other hand, contact cleaner followed by compressed air gives excellent results. And it's probably the most practical way to clean pots because maybe you have to take off the front panel but you don't have to disassemble the whole synth or desolder the pots. Other than replacement with a new part, the next best method is to desolder the potentiometer, disassemble it, manually clean it, reassemble it, and solder it back in place. If you can't disassemble the potentiometer, uh, soaking in isopropyl alcohol is a viable option. Of course, the disadvantage of these methods is it's very labor-intensive. The best method, of course, is replacement with a new part. However, due to the age of your equipment or parts availability, that might not be possible. Thanks for watching.